Okay, I have a book in my lap. We're gonna use it. I have a book in my lap and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. Um, so, a little while ago, I was able to visit New York City for the first time, a couple years ago, I think. And I rode, rode on the subway. I've never been in a subway before. Um, but one of the things, one of the things I noticed was how people behaved on the subway. There were all these signs that were like, "Hey, on the subway, do this, do this, do this. Hey, don't like put your makeup on in the subway. Don't do put your feet up on the thing." There are all these rules that people seem to be be. be not only accepting, like, yeah, they, these are the rules of the subway, but also they seemed to be following. And I thought, this is remarkable. And it actually made the subway experience more enjoyable. Here from Minnesota, what do I know about subways, right? I'm thinking like, I've seen movies from the 80s where the subway is like the worst place to be. This was actually like taking a nice little train that was under the ground and it was a little adventure for Father Mike. Why was it an adventure? Why was it pleasant? Because of courtesy. And you might be like, oh, because of courtesy, nice. What a great topic. But do you know that, did you know that courtesy is a virtue? Courtesy is not one of the four cardinal virtues, not one of the three theological virtues, but it actually is a virtue. You know, it comes from the word courtesy, courteous, comes from the court. Like, so back in the day, if you were in the presence of royalty, for the, in the presence of the king, there was a certain way that you would act. And there was a certain way the king would act. Here we are, we're in this unique situation where king is talking to you know, servant where, where Prince is talking to Popper, like hold this kind of situation where how do we address each other? Well, here's some rules of the court. Courtesy, right? Courtesy. Here's some rules of the court that help us communicate in a way that acknowledges the person speaking, acknowledges the person being spoken to, and acknowledges the dignity that's owed towards both. This is what it is to have courtesy. Because courtesy ultimately is rooted in human dignity. You know, St. Paul, um, he wrote this, he wrote this to, to the early churches. He said, anticipate one another in showing respect. In so many ways, that, that invocation, that command to anticipate one another in showing respect is St. Paul saying, have courtesy towards each other. Because just like on the subway, hey, we're in a crammed, we're in a close space. So here's the deal. On the subway, behave in this way. Not because you know, we're stuffy here on the subway, not because this is all about the rules, but because here we are in this tight, confined space and without knowing how to behave in this area, we're going to interrupt each other and we're not gonna help each other. We're gonna get in each other's way in a way that doesn't assist the buildup of the people around us. In fact, that's why I like this definition of courtesy. It's by um, a man named Father Romano Guardini and he writes about this, he says, um, Courtesy is what? Courtesy is a little consideration for the mood of our neighbor. <laughs> it's sympathy for his weariness. It's smoothing over a painful situation and so forth. He goes on to say, he says, courtesy is a constant attempt to make life easier and to obviate the many and often strange threats that endanger it. That's courtesy. To lack courtesy is to only be concerned with myself. To lack courtesy is to forget there's people around me. To lack courtesy is to be the person on the road who doesn't let anyone in. Why? Because, listen, I got somewhere to go and you're just there. But courtesy looks up from oneself and says, okay, how can I lessen the weariness? How can I lessen the sadness? How can I, how can I make life easier for the people around me? Etiquette has a bad, gets a bad rap. We do an etiquette dinner at least once a year here at the university. And in it, we want to uh, help students know, like, here, here's how you have good etiquette at a social hour. Here's how you have good etiquette at a dinner table. Here's how you have good etiquette at a job interview. And at first, people are like, oh, etiquette, that seems so stuffy. It seems so formal. It seems so foreign. And yet, when you learn the etiquette, when you learn, okay, here's how I act in this kind of situation, it's not merely oriented, it's not, it's not at all oriented towards stuffiness. It's oriented towards freedom. And it's oriented towards caring. What I mean by that is this. If I already have the etiquette, I know how to use knife and fork. I have freedom to enjoy this moment. Not only do I have freedom to enjoy this moment, I have now the ability to care for the people around me. Because here we are in this social situation where I don't know who's the boss, I don't know who's you know, getting fired, I don't know who the king is, I don't know who the servant is, that kind of thing. But if I, if I have etiquette, I now treat people in a certain way and it gives me the freedom not only to, to interact in this moment, but also gives me the ability to care for the people around me. To have con real concern, even if it might seem extraneous. Because courtesy will slow you down. Courtesy will 
cause you to have to take detours. Courtesy will get in your way because what you're doing is you're letting someone else in. Courtesy might lead you to do something that, will, that may have no material value but, have, but could have incredible human value. Here's my painful example. When I was getting ordained, um, I sent out invitations to my ordination. I was like, well, I don't, I don't care. I mean, anyone who, you know the date, June 6th, come if you want, awesome. But like, I'm not a super formal guy. I'm kind of like, you know, whatever. And my mom was like, you got to send out invitations. So I sent out invitations. And then she's like, you got to send an invitation to your uncle, her, her brother. I was like, well, he lives in California. I mean, he can't make it to this ordination and I don't want to impose on him. And she's like, just send it to him and to your aunt. And let them know that, you know, and I was like, well, no, they can't come. They're in California. It's a Friday afternoon. They won't want to make this whole trip. And so I'm not going to send an invitation. Because I was thinking like, well, no, I mean, it's impractical. I did not know. Until after he died. Then my, wow. Am I not sending an invitation to him? It was interpreted by him as, I don't want you here. That's not what I meant. What I meant was like, no, it's just impractical. I mean, he can't make it. Why would I send an invitation? But courtesy treats people like people rather than like practicalities. Because of that, Courtesy might lead you to do something that's not practical. Like send an invitation to someone you know can't come. Courtesy will take time. In fact, that's what Father Gordini says as well. Courtesy takes time. Causes you to take the detour. Causes you to let someone else in. Causes you to do something that's impractical. But he goes on to say, life takes detours. <laughs> that's what life does. Life takes detours. Life squanders, or rather, life consumes time. Life wants to linger. Life wants to delay. Life wants to wait around for the extra things. And if I don't have courtesy, then I don't have those beautiful elements of life that delay, that linger, that wait for the extra things. See, courtesy not only, like etiquette, not only gives me an interior freedom to be able to be in a situation, but also cares for others. And I can't care for others unless I have time for others. I cannot care for others unless I have time for others. So how will courtesy be in your life today? How will you fit a little bit of courtesy into your life today? St. Paul, anticipate one another in showing respect. Be courteous. Be kind. Take time for others. From all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. Thank you.